trade wars escalate between two of the world's largest economies, Juan Guaido seeks for U.S. intervention, and conflict arises between PJP and Congress. Find out all about this and more in today's episode. Hi, I'm Neha, and welcome to Logically India's News Rundown. Our news for today are our first segment in world news. Trump says that the tariff on 200 billion Chinese goods will increase from the current 10% to a whooping 25%. The announcement was made in a pair of tweets, complaining that the trade talks were proceeding too slowly as Beijing tries to renegotiate, and that only if Washington slaps higher duties on Chinese products will Beijing be more likely to take countermeasures. The Trump administration also plans to announce additional sanctions on Iran within a week. Last month, the US had announced that no fresh sanction waivers will be issued for Iranian oil importers, which include countries like China, South Korea, India, and five others. The US extended its waivers from 90 to 180 days, which means the continuation of work at Iranian nuclear sites will be allowed, however, with US penalties. This time, the White House is expected to target a whole new sector of the Iranian economy with its sanctions. In the South American subcontinent, leader of opposition Juan Guaido is again signaling an intervention by the U.S. military in Venezuela. He said that he made a big mistake thinking that he had the support of the Venezuelan military, as opposed to the socialist dictator-in-chief Nicolas Maduro. He expected Maduro to step down amid the groundswell of defectors that existed within the military. Maduro, however, quashed all street protests and left Guaido's U.S.-based opposition on its heels. In the Middle East, reports from officials state that the Palestinian leaders in Gaza have agreed to a ceasefire on Monday, which would end the two-day violence with Israel. The violent attacks, which could have easily escalated to a full-blown war. The escalation began first on Saturday, with massive rocket fire from Gaza, to which Israel retaliated with strikes. The attack then continued throughout Sunday. Due to the strikes, at least 23 Palestinians, which included nine militants, and four Israeli civilians were killed. In other news, the Sultan of Brunei rules out the death penalty for gay sex. This comes from the diplomatic pressure, not just by celebrities like George Clooney and Ellen DeGeneres, but also from the mass boycott of hotels owned by the Sultan. Brunei sparked international outcry on April 3rd, when it passed a legislation punishing gay sex by stoning to death. Brunei has always protected its right to implement laws, elements of which can be found in 2014. However, most of the laws have been rolled out since then. Coming back home, senior BJP leaders Arun Jaitley and Prakash Javedkar hit back at Congress President Rahul Gandhi on Sunday. Rahul Gandhi slammed the Prime Minister's remarks made on the late Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi over corruption. Modi's remarks come after Rahul Gandhi's incessant attacks on him regarding the Rafale fighter jet deal. Along with the Congress leader, Chief Minister of Delhi Arun Kejriwal said that he was targeted only because of the questions he'd been asking about the Prime Minister's relationship with Pakistan. Kejriwal was attacked on a road show in Delhi, and he said, This is the ninth attack on me and fifth one since I took charge as a Chief Minister of Delhi. He added that the Aam Aadmi Party had investigated the matter and that the person who attacked Kejriwal was not a part of the Aam Aadmi Party, according to police claims. Moving on to election news, Nearly 900 million voters are eligible to cast their ballots for the ongoing national elections. The decision rests on either re-electing Prime Minister Narendra Modi and his BJP party for a second term or not. These votes would determine the stand of the country regarding growing trends in politics in India, which is Hindu nationalism versus the Congress party which calls itself secular. With five phases done and just two more to go, 23rd of May will be the D-Day for India's new government. Who do you think will make the cut this time? Don't forget to let us know in the comments below. Like, subscribe and remember, when you think of news, always think logically.